I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. In the summer of 2022, a group of friends set out on what they hoped would be the adventure of a lifetime. Sarah, Mark, Jason, and Emily had been close since college, and after years of planning, they finally decided to rent a sailboat and spend two weeks exploring the remote waters of the Atlantic Ocean. They dreamed of crystal clear waters, peaceful nights under the stars, and the freedom of being away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. The first few days of the trip were everything they had hoped for. The weather was perfect and the sea was calm. They spent their days swimming, fishing, and exploring uninhabited islands. At night, they would gather on the deck, sharing stories and laughter as the boat gently rocked on the waves. On the fifth day, the weather took a sudden turn for the worse. Dark clouds rolled in, and the wind picked up, turning the previously serene sea into a churning mass of white caps and swells. The group decided to take shelter in a small cove they had passed earlier, hoping to wait out the storm. As the storm raged outside, they huddled in the boat's cabin, listening to the wind howl and the rain pound against the hull. Hours passed, and the storm showed no signs of letting up. Suddenly, there was a loud thud against the side of the boat, followed by a scraping sound that sent shivers down their spines. What was that? Emily asked, her voice trembling. Probably just debris from the storm, Mark said, trying to sound confident. I'll go check it out. He grabbed a flashlight and climbed out of the cabin. The rain stung his face, and the wind threatened to knock him off his feet. He made his way to the side of the boat and shone the flashlight into the water. The beam cut through the darkness, revealing something that made his blood run cold. A large, barnacle-encrusted object was wedged against the hull. It looked like part of a shipwreck, but there was something off about it. Mark! What is it? Sarah called from the cabin. It's... I'm not sure. It looks like part of an old ship, he replied, his voice shaky. But there's something strange about it. Before he could investigate further, another wave crashed against the boat, dislodging the object and sending it sinking into the depths. Mark returned to the cabin, his mind racing. I know that. We need to get out of here as soon as the storm lets up, he said. I don't like this. The others nodded in agreement, and they spent a restless night waiting for the storm to pass. By morning the weather had calmed, but an eerie fog had settled over the sea, reducing visibility to almost nothing. Determined to put some distance between themselves and the strange object, they set sail, navigating carefully through the fog. Hours passed, and the fog showed no signs of lifting. The atmosphere grew increasingly tense, and a sense of unease settled over the group. Do you hear that? Jason asked suddenly, breaking the silence. They all stopped and listened. At first, there was nothing but the gentle lapping of the waves against the hull. But then, faintly, they heard it. A low, rhythmic thumping sound coming from somewhere beneath the boat. What the hell is that? Sarah whispered, her eyes wide with fear. Mark grabbed the flashlight and peered over the side of the boat. The water was dark and murky, and he could see nothing below the surface. The thumping continued growing louder and more insistent. We need to get out of here, he said, his voice filled with urgency. Something's not right. They increased their speed, hoping to outrun whatever was making the noise. But the thumping followed them, growing louder with each passing minute. The fog closed in around them, and a sense of dread settled over the boat. Suddenly, there was a loud crash, and the boat lurched violently to one side. Emily screamed as she was thrown against the cabin wall. Mark scrambled to the helm, trying to regain control, but the boat was being pulled by some unseen force. Something's got us, he shouted. We need to cut the engine. Jason and Sarah rushed to the stern and saw a massive shadowy shape beneath the water, its tentacles wrapped around the propeller. They grabbed knives and began hacking at the tentacles, their hearts pounding with fear. As they fought to free the boat, the fog seemed to thicken and the air grew colder. The thumping sound was deafening now, reverberating through the hull. With one final effort, they managed to sever the tentacles and the boat lurched forward, free from the creature's grip. They sailed for hours, not daring to slow down until the fog finally began to lift. Exhausted and terrified, they found a small sheltered cove and anchored the boat. They huddled together in the cabin, trying to make sense of what had happened. What was that thing? Emily asked, her voice shaking. I don't know, Mark replied, his face pale. 
but we need to be careful. There's something out here and it's not friendly. As night fell, they took turns keeping watch, unable to shake the feeling that they were being watched. The thumping sound had stopped, but the sense of unease remained. Every creak of the boat, every splash of water, set their nerves on edge. In the early hours of the morning, just as the first light of dawn began to break, Jason, who was on watch, saw something that made his blood run cold. A dark shape was moving slowly through the water, heading straight for the boat. He grabbed the binoculars and focused on the shape, his heart pounding. It's back, he whispered, waking the others. It's coming for us. Hey. They all scrambled to the deck, fear gripping their hearts. The shape grew closer, revealing itself to be a massive, ancient-looking ship, its hull covered in barnacles and seaweed. It moved silently through the water, heading straight for them. We need to get out of here, now, Mark shouted, starting the engine. But before they could move, the ship was upon them. A heavy, oppressive silence fell over the boat as the ancient vessel loomed above them. They could see figures moving on the deck, shadowy, indistinct shapes that seemed to watch them with malevolent intent. The thumping sound returned, louder than ever, and the water around the boat began to churn. Tentacles rose from the depths, wrapping around the hull and pulling them closer to the ancient ship. Cut the ropes. We need to get free, Mark shouted, his voice filled with desperation. They grabbed knives and began hacking at the tentacles, but the creatures were relentless. The boat was pulled closer and closer to the ship, and the figures on the deck seemed to reach out, their eyes glowing with an eerie light. We're not going to make it, Sarah whispered, tears streaming down her face. As the boat was pulled alongside the ancient ship, the figures reached out, their hands cold and clammy. They grabbed the friends, pulling them onto the deck of the ship. The air was filled with the stench of decay and the wood creaked underfoot as they were dragged towards the center of the ship. They were forced to kneel before a massive, grotesque figure, a rotting, skeletal captain with eyes that glowed like embers. The captain raised a bony hand, and the thumping sound ceased, replaced by an oppressive silence. You have trespassed into my domain, the captain hissed, his voice like the rustling of dead leaves, and now you will pay the price. The friends struggled, but the ghostly figures held them fast. The captain raised his hand, and the deck beneath them began to shift and change, transforming into a swirling vortex of darkness. The friends felt themselves being pulled into the vortex, their screams echoing through the air. As they were consumed by the darkness, the last thing they saw was the captain's glowing eyes, filled with a cold, malevolent satisfaction. The ancient ship vanished into the fog, leaving no trace of its presence, and the friends were never seen again lost to the depths of the abyss. Their fate a chilling reminder of the horrors that lurk in the dark, uncharted waters of the sea. The story of their disappearance became a haunting legend, a warning to those who dared to venture into the unknown, where the past and present intertwine, and ancient evils wait for their next victims. The ancient ship vanished as if it had never been, leaving behind nothing but the churning waters and the oppressive silence of the early dawn. The friends were swallowed by the darkness, their screams lost to the depths of the sea. But their ordeal was far from over. Mark awoke in complete darkness, the air thick and heavy with the scent of decay. He tried to move, but his hands and feet were bound. Panic surged through him as he struggled against the restraints, his mind racing to make sense of what had happened. Sarah? Emily? Jason? He called out, his voice trembling. A faint, groggy response came from nearby. Mark? Where are we? It was Sarah, her voice weak and filled with fear. I don't know, Mark replied, straining to see through the darkness. But we need to get out of here. As their eyes adjusted, they realized they were in a damp, dimly lit hold of the ancient ship, its walls lined with rotting wood and covered in a thick layer of mold and barnacles. The air was suffocating, and the only sound was the distant, rhythmic thumping that had haunted them since the storm. Suddenly, a door creaked open, and a figure entered, carrying a lantern. The flickering light cast eerie shadows on the walls, revealing the skeletal, ghostly crew members who had captured them. The lantern-bearer was the captain, his glowing eyes fixed on the friends with a malevolent gleam. "'Welcome to my ship,' the captain hissed, his voice echoing through the hold. "'You are now part of my crew, doomed to sail the eternal seas.' The friends exchanged terrified glances. 
their minds struggling to comprehend the horror of their situation. The captain motioned to the ghostly crew, who approached and began untying their bonds. You will serve me or face a fate far worse than death. Reluctantly, they were led out of the hold and onto the deck of the ship. The air was cold and damp, and the sea around them was shrouded in an impenetrable fog. The ghostly crew moved about the ship with silent efficiency, their hollow eyes staring blankly ahead. You will work, the captain commanded, pointing to various tasks. You will obey, and you will not try to escape. Days turned into weeks as the friends labored on the ship, their hope fading with each passing day. The ghostly crew never spoke, their eyes devoid of any humanity. The friends could feel their own spirits waning, the weight of their situation crushing their resolve. One night, as the ship sailed through a particularly dense fog, Mark gathered the others. We can't keep living like this, he whispered. We have to find a way to escape. But how? Emily asked, her voice barely audible. The captain and his crew are always watching. And even if we do escape, where would we go? We're in the middle of the ocean. There has to be a way, Mark insisted. We just need to be smart about it. We need to find something, anything, that can help us get off this ship. Over the next few days, they quietly searched for anything that could aid their escape. They discovered an old, weathered map in the captain's quarters, depicting the cursed routes the ship sailed. They also found a small lifeboat hidden beneath a tarp, long forgotten by the ghostly crew. We can use this, Jason said, his voice filled with a newfound determination. We'll wait for the right moment, and then we'll make our move. Their opportunity came one night when a violent storm rocked the ship. The ghostly crew moved frantically to secure the sails and rigging, giving the friends a chance to slip away unnoticed. They quickly lowered the lifeboat into the churning sea, their hearts pounding with fear and hope. As they rowed away from the ship, the storm grew more intense, the waves towering above them and the wind howling like a banshee. The ghostly ship faded into the distance, its lights flickering like distant stars. For a moment it seemed as though they might actually escape, but their relief was short-lived. As they fought to keep the lifeboat steady, the water around them began to churn and bubble. Dark tendrils of sludge rose from the depths, wrapping around the boat and pulling it down. No, we were so close, Sarah screamed, her voice drowned out by the storm. The lifeboat capsized and they were plunged into the icy water. The tendrils tightened their grip, dragging them deeper and deeper. The friends struggled, but the force was too strong. As the darkness closed in around them, they felt a cold, malevolent presence, the same one that had haunted them on the ship. Mark's vision blurred, and the last thing he saw was the glowing eyes of the captain, staring at him from the depths of the abyss. Then everything went black. When Mark awoke, he was back on the deck of the ancient ship, his friends lying unconscious beside him. The captain stood over them, a twisted smile on his skeletal face. You cannot escape your fate, he hissed. You are bound to this ship, just as I am, forever. Despair washed over Mark as he realized the truth. They were trapped, bound to the cursed ship for eternity. The storm raged on, and the ship sailed into the darkness, its ghostly crew doomed to wander the endless sea. The friends' screams were lost to the wind, their hopes of escape shattered. They had become part of the legend, a cautionary tale for those who dared to venture into the unknown waters of the abyss, where ancient evils and restless spirits waited to claim their next victims. In the summer of 2019, a marine biology research team set out on a month-long expedition to study the behavior of deep-sea creatures in the North Atlantic Ocean. The team consisted of Dr. Anne Mitchell, the lead scientist, her assistant Tom Larson, marine biologist Dr. Karen Yates, and engineer Michael Torres. They boarded the research vessel Endeavour, excited about the discoveries that awaited them. The first two weeks of the voyage were uneventful. The team conducted their studies, collecting samples and data from the deep ocean. The weather was perfect, and the sea was calm. They were miles away from any land, surrounded by nothing but endless blue waves and skies. Spirits were high, and the team worked seamlessly together. One night, as the team gathered in the ship's galley for dinner, the weather began to change. Dark clouds rolled in, and the wind picked up, 
causing the ship to rock gently on the waves. Dr. Mitchell glanced out the window, her brow furrowing. Looks like a storm is coming, she said. We should secure the equipment and hunker down for the night. The team quickly went to work, securing the sensitive equipment and making sure everything was tied down. By the time they finished, the storm was upon them. The wind howled and rain pounded against the deck. The ship rocked violently and waves crashed over the bow. Everyone stay inside and hold on tight, Michael warned, his voice barely audible over the roar of the storm. Hours passed and the storm showed no signs of letting up. The team huddled together in the galley, their faces pale with fear. Suddenly, a loud bang echoed through the ship, followed by a shudder that ran through the vessel. What was that? Karen asked, her eyes wide with panic. I don't know, Tom replied. It sounded like it came from the engine room. Michael grabbed a flashlight and headed towards the engine room, his heart pounding. The others followed, anxious to find out what had happened. As they approached the engine room, they noticed water seeping under the door. <laughs> Michael pushed the door open and shone the flashlight inside. The engine room was flooded, and the source of the water was immediately apparent, a large hole in the hull, torn open by something massive and unseen. We're taking on water, Michael shouted. We need to seal this off and pump the water out, or we're going to sink. The team scrambled to find materials to patch the hole, working frantically as the water level continued to rise. After what felt like an eternity, they managed to seal the breach and activate the pumps. Exhausted and soaked to the bone, they returned to the galley to regroup. What could have caused that? Anne asked, her voice shaking. It was like something took a bite out of the ship. I don't know, Michael replied. But whatever it was, it was big. We need to be on high alert. The storm finally passed, but an eerie fog settled over the sea, reducing visibility to almost nothing. The team took turns keeping watch, unable to shake the feeling that they were being watched. On the third night after the storm, Tom was on watch when he heard a faint, rhythmic tapping coming from the side of the ship. He leaned over the railing, peering into the fog, but saw nothing. The tapping grew louder and more insistent, sending shivers down his spine. Anne, Karen, Michael, come here. You need to hear this, he called out, his voice trembling. The others rushed to his side, listening intently. The tapping continued, echoing through the fog. It seemed to be coming from all around them, as if the sea itself was alive with some unseen presence. What is that? Karen whispered, fear evident in her voice. I don't know. Anne replied, but we need to be careful. It could be some kind of deep sea creature attracted by the storm. They decided to lower an underwater camera to see if they could spot anything beneath the surface. Michael operated the winch, slowly lowering the camera into the dark water. The monitor flickered to life, displaying murky images of the deep sea. At first there was nothing but darkness, but then shapes began to emerge from the gloom large, indistinct forms that moved with a slow, deliberate grace. The tapping grew louder, more insistent, as if whatever was down there was aware of their presence. Look at that, Anne said, pointing to the screen. What are those things? And I the creatures on the screen were unlike anything they had ever seen. They were massive, with long, sinuous bodies and glowing eyes that seemed to pierce through the darkness. Their skin was covered in a strange, bioluminescent algae that pulsed with an eerie light. Could they be some kind of undiscovered species? Karen asked, her voice filled with a mix of awe and fear. Possibly, Anne replied, but we need to be cautious. We don't know how they might react to our presence. Suddenly, one of the creatures darted towards the camera, its glowing eyes filling the screen. The monitor went black and the ship shuddered as if something had struck it. We need to get out of here. Michael said, his voice tense. Whatever those things are, they're not friendly. And the team hurried to the bridge, but as they started the engine, the ship lurched violently to one side. The sound of tearing metal filled the air, and the hull began to take on water again. Abandon ship, Michael shouted. Everyone, get to the lifeboats! The team scrambled to launch the lifeboats, their hearts pounding with fear. As they lowered themselves into the water, they could see the creatures circling the ship, their glowing eyes watching them with an almost predatory intent. We need to stay together, Anne said, her voice trembling. We'll signal for help and hope someone comes. 
They paddled away from the sinking ship, the creatures following them at a distance. The fog closed in around them, and the tapping sound grew louder, echoing through the night. Hours passed, and there was no sign of rescue. The team huddled together in the lifeboat, their fear growing with each passing moment. The creatures continued to circle, their glowing eyes a constant reminder of the danger that lurked beneath the surface. We can't just sit here and wait to be eaten, Tom said, his voice filled with desperation. We need to do something. Like what? Karen replied. We can't outpace them, and we have no way to fight back. As the sun began to rise, they spotted a faint outline of land in the distance. Hope surged through them as they paddled towards it, the creatures following closely behind. We're almost there, Michael said, his voice filled with determination. Just a little further. But as they neared the shore, the water around them began to churn violently. The creatures surged forward, their glowing eyes fixed on the lifeboat. The tapping sound became deafening, reverberating through the water. Hang on, Anne shouted, trying to steer the lifeboat towards the shore. The creatures attacked, their massive bodies colliding with the lifeboat. The team fought desperately to stay afloat, but the creatures were relentless. The lifeboat capsized, and they were thrown into the icy water. Panic set in as they struggled to stay together, the creatures closing in around them. Anne felt something wrap around her leg, pulling her down into the depths. She screamed, but the water filled her lungs, cutting off her cries. <laughs> Michael and Tom managed to grab onto a piece of the wreckage, their hearts pounding with fear. They watched helplessly as Karen was dragged underwater, her screams lost to the dark sea. We have to keep moving, Michael gasped, his voice filled with desperation. We can't give up. With the last of their strength, they paddled towards the shore, the creatures still following them. As they reached the shallow water, the creatures seemed to hesitate, their glowing eyes watching them from a distance. Exhausted and terrified, Michael and Tom crawled onto the beach, collapsing in the sand. They looked back at the water, the creature's eyes still visible beneath the surface. What were those things? Tom whispered, his voice filled with horror. I don't know, Michael replied, his voice trembling. But we need to find help. We need to warn people about what's out there. They stumbled to their feet, their bodies battered and bruised. As they made their way inland, they knew their ordeal was far from over. The creatures were still out there, lurking beneath the surface waiting for their next victims, and the tapping sound continued, echoing through their minds, a constant reminder of the horrors they had faced and the dangers that lurked in the dark, uncharted waters of the sea. Michael and Tom trudged through the dense underbrush, the sound of the sea fading behind them. Exhausted and terrified, they had no idea where they were or how far they had to go to find help. The dense foliage and unfamiliar terrain only added to their sense of isolation and fear. We need to find higher ground, Michael said, his voice strained. Maybe we can spot a village or some sign of civilization. Tom nodded, but his eyes were distant, haunted by the memory of their friends being dragged into the depths by those monstrous creatures. They climbed a steep hill, their progress slow and arduous. As they reached the top, they saw a small village in the distance nestled by the coastline. Look there, Michael pointed. We can make it. We just need to keep going. They stumbled towards the village, their pace quickening with renewed hope. As they approached, they noticed that the village seemed deserted. The houses were old and worn, their paint peeling and windows boarded up. Hello? Michael called out, his voice echoing through the empty streets. Is anyone here? We need help. There was no response, only the eerie silence of the abandoned village. They entered one of the houses, hoping to find some clue about what had happened. Inside, they found signs of a hasty departure, half-eaten meals left on tables, belongings scattered on the floor. This place gives me the creeps, Tom muttered. It's like everyone just vanished. Michael felt a chill run down his spine. Let's keep looking. There has to be someone here who can help us. As they explored the village, they came across a small church. The doors were slightly ajar and a faint light flickered inside. They pushed the doors open and entered cautiously. The interior was dimly lit by candles, and the air was thick with the scent of incense. At the front of the church, they saw an old man kneeling in prayer. He looked up as they approached, his eyes filled with a mix of sorrow and fear. Who are you? The old man asked, his voice trembling. 
What are you doing here? We were on a research vessel, Michael explained. Our ship was attacked by something. We barely made it to shore. We need help. The old man sighed deeply. You should not have come here. This village is cursed. Cursed, Tom repeated, his voice shaking. What do you mean? The old man gestured for them to sit. Long ago, the people of this village made a pact with the creatures of the deep. They were promised prosperity and protection in exchange for sacrifices. But the pact was broken, and the creatures turned against us. Now, they haunt these waters, taking anyone who dares to venture too close. Is there any way to stop them? Michael asked, desperation creeping into his voice. There is one way, the old man said, but it is dangerous. You must find the ancient shrine deep in the forest. There you can perform a ritual to appease the creatures and lift the curse. But be warned, the forest is treacherous, and the creatures will do everything in their power to stop you. Michael and Tom exchanged a determined look. We'll do it, Michael said. We have no other choice. The old man gave them directions to the shrine and provided them with supplies for the journey. May the gods protect you, he said as they set out. The forest was dark and foreboding, the thick canopy blocking out most of the sunlight. The further they ventured, the more oppressive the atmosphere became. Strange noises echoed through the trees and the ground seemed to shift beneath their feet. After hours of navigating the dense forest, they finally reached the shrine. It was an ancient stone structure, covered in moss and vines. The air around it was cold, and the ground was littered with bones and other remnants of past sacrifices. We need to perform the ritual, Michael said, pulling out the instructions the old man had given them. We have to do this right. They followed the instructions carefully, arranging the offerings and reciting the incantations. As they completed the ritual, a low rumbling sound filled the air, and the ground began to tremble. What's happening? Tom shouted, panic in his voice. Before Michael could respond, the creatures emerged from the shadows, their glowing eyes fixed on the two men. The largest of the creatures, a massive, serpent-like being, slithered forward, its eyes filled with an ancient, malevolent intelligence. You dare to perform the ritual? The creature hissed, its voice echoing in their minds. You think you can appease us? We're trying to lift the curse, Michael said, his voice trembling. We just want to end this. The creature laughed, a chilling sound that reverberated through the forest. There is no end. The curse is eternal. You belong to us now. The creatures surged forward, their tendrils wrapping around Michael and Tom. They struggled, but the creatures were too strong. As they were pulled into the darkness, the shrine began to crumble, the ancient stone turning to dust. Michael felt himself being dragged into the depths, the air growing colder and more suffocating. He could hear Tom's screams but they grew fainter with each passing second. The last thing he saw was the creature's glowing eyes, filled with triumph. The village of Millwood remained abandoned, a silent testament to the horrors that lurked beneath the sea. The story of the cursed village and the lost researchers became a chilling legend, a warning to those who dared to venture into the unknown waters of the abyss. And the creatures continued to haunt the seas, their glowing eyes a constant reminder of the ancient pact that had been broken, and the eternal curse that could never be lifted. The tapping sound echoed through the depths, a sinister reminder that the abyss was always watching, always waiting, ready to claim its next victims. In the autumn of 2021, Seasoned sailor Jack Reynolds embarked on a solo voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. Jack, a retired naval officer, had spent most of his life at sea, navigating some of the world's most treacherous waters. This journey was meant to be a peaceful retreat, a chance to reconnect with the ocean and reflect on his years of service. Jack's vessel, the Sea Wanderer, was a sturdy 40-foot sloop, equipped with all the modern navigational aids and safety gear. He had stocked it with enough supplies to last several months and planned to make landfall in various ports along the way to restock and explore. The first few weeks of his journey were uneventful, filled with the tranquility of the open sea and the soothing rhythm of the waves. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink, Jack noticed something unusual on the radar. 
a large, stationary blip appeared about five nautical miles ahead. Curious and cautious, he adjusted his course to investigate. As he drew closer, the object came into view. It was a massive, rusting hulk of a ship, seemingly abandoned and drifting aimlessly. The vessel, a dilapidated cargo ship, had no identifying markings or lights. It lay eerily still on the water, a ghostly silhouette against the darkening sky. Jack felt a chill run down his spine. Abandoned ships were not uncommon in the vast expanse of the ocean, but something about this one felt different. He decided to circle the ship at a safe distance, scanning it with his binoculars. The deck was empty, and the windows of the superstructure were dark and lifeless. Unable to quell his curiosity, Jack radioed a nearby coastal station to report the sighting. The operator, a young man named Carlos, responded promptly. Coastal Station, this is Sea Wanderer. I've come across an abandoned vessel approximately five nautical miles west of my current position. No signs of life or identifying marks. Over. Roger, Sea Wanderer. We have no reports of a missing vessel in that area. Can you provide any additional details? Over. Jack described the ship's appearance and its coordinates. Carlos assured him that a patrol boat would be dispatched to investigate, but advised Jack to keep a safe distance. Understood, Coastal Station. I'll maintain a safe distance and monitor the situation. Sea Wanderer out. Jack anchored his boat a mile away from the derelict ship and settled in for the night, keeping a watchful eye on the ghostly vessel. The sea was calm, and the night was eerily quiet, save for the gentle lapping of the waves against the hull of his boat. Around midnight, Jack was jolted awake by a loud metallic clang. He rushed to the deck and peered through the darkness towards the abandoned ship. It seemed unchanged, but the sound had definitely come from its direction. Nick Jack grabbed his binoculars and scanned the ship's deck again. As he focused on the bridge, he thought he saw a faint light flicker inside, then disappear. His heart pounded as he considered his options. He could wait for the patrol boat or take a closer look himself. Against his better judgment, Jack decided to investigate. He donned his wetsuit, grabbed a flashlight, and lowered his dinghy into the water. The short journey to the abandoned ship was filled with a growing sense of dread, the silhouette of the ghostly vessel looming larger with each stroke of the oars. As he reached the side of the ship, he found a rusted ladder hanging down from the deck. He secured the dinghy and began to climb, the metal rungs creaking under his weight. When he reached the deck, he paused to listen. The ship groaned and creaked in the gentle swell, but there was no sign of movement. Jack moved cautiously, his flashlight cutting through the darkness. He made his way towards the superstructure, the beam of light illuminating the decayed and corroded surfaces. The ship's condition was worse than he had anticipated. Years of neglect had left it a crumbling ruin. As he reached the entrance to the bridge, the door creaked open with a push. Inside, the air was thick with the smell of rust and decay. Jack scanned the room, his flashlight revealing a scene frozen in time. Charts and maps lay scattered across the floor, and the control panels were covered in a thick layer of dust and grime. Jack's eyes were drawn to a large, leather-bound logbook lying open on the captain's desk. He picked it up and began to read, hoping to find some clue about what had happened to the ship and its crew. The entries were mundane at first, detailing the ship's course and cargo, but as he flipped through the pages, the tone of the entries changed. The captain's handwriting grew erratic, the entries filled with descriptions of strange occurrences. Crew members had reported seeing shadowy figures below deck, hearing whispers in the dead of night, and feeling an overwhelming sense of dread. The final entry was particularly chilling. March 23rd, 2020, the crew is gone, vanished without a trace. I am the last one left. The ship is cursed haunted by something beyond comprehension. I fear I will not survive the night. May God have mercy on my soul. A sudden noise behind him made Jack spin around, his flashlight illuminating an empty hallway. The ship seemed to groan in response, the metal hull flexing and creaking. Jack's heart raced as he realized he needed to leave immediately. He turned to exit the bridge but stopped dead in his tracks. Standing in the doorway was a figure, its features obscured by shadows. Jack's flashlight flickered, and in that brief moment of darkness, the figure vanished. Panic surged through him as he sprinted back towards the deck. As he climbed down the ladder, he felt a cold hand grip his ankle. He kicked frantically, breaking free and plunging into the water below. He swam to his dinghy and rowed back to the Sea Wanderer with all his strength, not daring to look back. Once safely aboard his boat, 
Jack radioed the coastal station again, his voice trembling. Coastal station, this is Sea Wanderer. The ship is haunted. I repeat, the ship is haunted. I saw... something. I'm leaving the area immediately. Over... Carlos's voice crackled over the radio, filled with concern. Roger. Sea Wanderer. A patrol boat is en route. Head to the nearest port and await further instructions. Over. Then Jack wasted no time in starting the engine and setting a course for the nearest port. As he sailed away, he glanced back at the abandoned ship one last time. It seemed to shimmer in the moonlight, a ghostly reminder of the horrors it held. The journey to the port was tense and filled with unease. Jack kept a constant watch, his mind replaying the events on the ship. When he finally reached the safety of the harbor, he was met by the patrol boat and a team of investigators. He recounted his harrowing experience, showing them the logbook and describing the figure he had seen. The investigators were skeptical, but agreed to examine the abandoned ship. Jack stayed in the harbor, waiting anxiously for news. Two days later, the investigators returned, their faces pale and drawn. They had found no trace of the figure Jack had described, but they had confirmed the presence of the logbook and the strange occurrences documented within. The ship was deemed too dangerous to salvage and was left to drift a ghostly reminder of the unknown horrors lurking beneath the waves. Jack's story spread quickly, becoming a cautionary tale among sailors and fishermen. The abandoned ship was never seen again, but the legend of its haunting lived on. Jack never sailed alone again, the memory of that night a constant reminder of the mysteries that lay hidden in the depths of the ocean. The abandoned ship's legend grew, whispered in hushed tones by sailors and fishermen alike. Jack Reynolds, forever changed by his encounter, became reclusive, his once fiery spirit dimmed by the horrors he had witnessed. He settled into a small coastal town, far from the bustling ports, hoping to find peace by the sea he once loved. Months passed, and the nightmares never ceased. Each night, Jack would relive the chilling encounter, the cold hand gripping his ankle, the ghostly figure in the doorway, and the eerie groans of the ship. Desperate for answers, he pored over the captain's logbook, hoping to uncover any clue that might explain the haunting. One stormy night, Jack sat alone in his small cottage, the wind howling outside, waves crashing against the shore. The power flickered, and a sense of dread washed over him. He heard a faint, rhythmic tapping coming from outside, reminiscent of the tapping on the derelict ship. His heart pounded as he peered out the window, but he saw nothing but the darkness and the storm. Suddenly, the power went out completely, plunging the cottage into darkness. Jack grabbed a flashlight and cautiously moved through the house, the beam of light trembling in his hand. The tapping grew louder, more insistent, echoing through the walls. He made his way to the front door and taking a deep breath, opened it. The storm's fury hit him, rain stinging his face and wind threatening to knock him over. Through the driving rain, he saw a dark figure standing on the shore, its eyes glowing faintly in the night. Jack's heart raced as he stepped outside, flashlight in hand, and approached the figure. As he drew closer, he realized with a jolt of terror that it was the same figure he had seen on the abandoned ship. It stood motionless, watching him with those haunting eyes. "'Who are you?' Jack shouted, his voice barely audible over the storm. "'What do you want?' The figure remained silent, its gaze unwavering. Jack felt a cold shiver run down his spine as he reached the shore, the water lapping at his feet. The figure began to move, gliding silently towards the water, beckoning Jack to follow. Against his better judgment, Jack felt an inexplicable pull, as if some unseen force was guiding him. He followed the figure into the waves, the icy water reaching his knees, then his waist. The figure led him further out to sea, where the water was deeper the darkness more oppressive. As they moved further from the shore, the figure stopped and turned to face Jack. Its eyes glowed brighter, illuminating the water around them. Jack's flashlight flickered and died, leaving him in total darkness, save for the eerie glow. You cannot escape, the figure whispered, its voice echoing in Jack's mind. The curse is eternal. You belong to us now. Before Jack could react, tendrils of dark, slimy sludge rose from the water, wrapping around his legs and pulling him under. He struggled desperately, but the force was too strong. The figure watched, its eyes filled with a malevolent satisfaction, as Jack was dragged into the depths. As the water closed over his head, Jack felt a crushing pressure in his chest, 
the air forced from his lungs. The last thing he saw before losing consciousness was the glowing eyes of the figure fading into the darkness. The next morning, Jack's body washed ashore, his lifeless eyes staring blankly at the sky. The townspeople found him, and seeing the look of terror frozen on his face, knew something terrible had happened. They whispered of the curse, the haunted ship, and the horrors of the deep. Jack was buried in a small cemetery overlooking the sea, but his story did not end there. His tale became a chilling legend, a warning to all who ventured out to sea. Sailors spoke of the ghostly figure and the tapping sound of the abandoned ship that was never found again. And on stormy nights, when the wind howled and the waves crashed against the shore, some claimed to see a dark figure standing at the water's edge, its eyes glowing faintly in the night. They whispered that Jack's spirit was doomed to wander the coast, forever trapped by the curse that had claimed him. The sea held its secrets, and those who dared to uncover them often paid the ultimate price. The legend of Jack Reynolds and the haunted ship served as a haunting reminder of the mysteries that lay beneath the waves, waiting to ensnare the unwary and drag them into the abyss. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 